Hello and welcome to the chapter on computer system overview. This is the part one of this particular chapter and in this part we are going to deal with the introduction to computer system. So let's start with the basics and let's start with the definition of a computer. So what is a computer? A computer is an electronic device that takes raw data as input and after processing converts them into a meaningful output. So what a computer is? It is an electronic device that takes raw data as input. What is the meaning of this part raw data as input? Like when we interact with the computer, we use various devices like input devices like keyboard, mouse, etc. in order to interact with the computer. Now while interacting with the computer, we give certain data from outside. That data that we give from outside is known as the input. The computer takes the input, it processes them, means it calculates them and then it converts them into a meaningful output. So whatever output is there, it is displayed with the help of a output device like the monitor. Let's see these terms in a little bit more details. So what are the important terms that we got here? The terms are data, input and output. So let's start with the first term that is data. Now what is the meaning of the word data? Raw facts or figures are referred to as data. So let's say we want to prepare tea. Now in order to prepare tea, we require certain ingredients like tea leaves, water, milk and sugar. Now these ingredients are known as data because these are some raw facts. Now if I talk with respect to a computer system, data may be some numbers like 5, 8, Neha, etc. So always remember raw facts and figures are referred to as data. Let's go to the next term that is input. What is input? The process of sending data from an external device to the computer is called input. Now whenever we interact with the computer, that means what we are doing? We are sending some data from an external device to the computer. That process of sending data from an external device to the computer is called input. Now how do you do the process of input? The process of input is done with the help of devices known as input devices. So the input devices are used to input data to a computer. Some examples of input devices are keyboard as we all know, mouse and maybe joystick. Joystick is used for playing games as you all are very familiar with it. Let's go to the next term, which is the output. Now, after we send data through the input devices, the data is processed and then converted into a meaningful output. That means the data that is sent from the computer to the various output devices is known as the output. Examples of output devices are monitor, printers, speakers. Now, if you think a little bit in a little bit deeper uh, deeper way then you will find that we use monitor printer or speaker to receive something so whatever instruction we give from the outside it is processed and it is displayed via the monitor now if we want it in a printed form then we require the help of printer now if i want to play some music the music we will be able to listen to the music with the help of speakers so this devices are known as output devices okay now so now i think now the definition of computer is clear so what is a computer let's go to it again it's an electronic device that takes raw data as input processes them and after processing it converts into a meaningful output now we need to know about few more terms the first term is hardware what is hardware? The physical electronic components of a computer are called hardware. So the components of a computer that we can touch are called hardware. Some examples of hardware in a computer are the devices attached to a computer like keyboard, mouse, CPU and the monitor. These are some examples of hardware. Next is software. What is software? A software may be defined as a set of related computer programs designed to solve a particular task. Now, if we have a number of programs which is destined 
to do a particular task or to solve a particular task then it is known as a software so it is a set of related programs used for solving a particular task some examples of software may include ms word it is used for which task solving which task it is used for solving the task of making documents next example of software may be ms excel it is used for data analysis or certain calculations for graphical analysis next week and we can have powerpoint it is used for making presentations we can have photoshop also it is used for photo editing so it is a set of related computers which is sorry it is a set of related programs designed to solve a particular task so each software is designed in such a way that so that it can perform a particular task now let's go and see the block diagram of a computer this is how a block diagram of a computer looks many people can draw it in different ways but these are the components which you will find common in all the block diagrams now let's try to understand the block diagram of a computer first thing we have is the input device this input devices are used to send data to a computer as we have already seen now the data that we send from the input device the data goes to the memory we have another main component of a computer which is known as the cpu cpu is known as the brain of the computer now there are two main parts of cpu actually there are three but in the block diagram we generally show only two they are alu okay the cpu is responsible for the overall working of the computer like our brain is responsible for the overall working of the human body similarly the cpu is responsible for the overall working of a computer now the different parts of a cpu are first is alu which stands for arithmetic logic unit next is cu which stands for control unit let's see the work of alu in brief the alu is responsible for performing arithmetic operations like plus minus into divide etc and taking logical decision logical decisions means to check whether something is greater than the other thing for like the comparison thing like greater than less than all these things are known as logical decisions arithmetic logic unit is responsible for performing arithmetic operations and taking logical decisions next we have the control unit control unit is responsible for sending or receiving the control signals okay now here we see some dotted lines the dotted lines represent the control signals if you look at the diagram carefully the control signals are connected from the control unit as you can see the control unit is connected to each and every component of the computer these are the control signals and the solid lines they represent the transfer of data from one device to other now under the control of control unit itself the data comes from the input device to the memory after that the data is processed in the alu and then the result is stored back in the memory so data comes from the input device to the memory then the processing takes place in the alu and after the processing takes place the result is again sent back to the memory then from the memory the processed results are converted to such a form that can be understood easily by human beings and then the output that is the result is displayed with the help of a output device this is how a computer system works let's try to segregate or and understand deeply about some of these components first is what is a cpu which is the brain of the computer cpu is the main control center and processing unit of a computer so all the controlling of the computer happens with the cpu therefore while purchasing a computer I, i mean a desktop computer the main thing that we focus on is the cpu because it is the main control center and the processing unit of a computer it is also known as the brain of a computer it guides directs and governs the performance of a computer 
Now, how a particular computer will perform, it will depend on how powerful is the CPU of a computer. Computer is. Now, let's see what are the components of a CPU. They are ALU, CU, and we have one more component which is not shown in the block diagram, but I'll be discussing it here, which is the resistor. So, three main components of a CPU are ALU, CU, and the resistors. Let's discuss about the ALU. ALU stands for arithmetic and logic unit. It is responsible for performing arithmetic operations and taking logical decisions. Arithmetic operations includes plus, minus, into, division, etc. And logical decision includes the comparison operators or the relational operators like greater than, less than, less than equals to, greater than equals to, equals to, not equals to, all this comes under logical decisions. Now let's take a part of the block diagram of a computer. Now let's say we want to compute 5 plus 6, we means the computer wants to compute 5 plus 6. Let's see how this computation will take place. Now for that let's take a part of the block diagram of a computer. So this is a part of the block diagram of a computer. Now whatever input we give through the keyboard or through any other input device for that matter. Now those input remains stored in the memory then from the memory it goes to the ALU that is the arithmetic logic unit. Now here in this case we have taken 5 plus 6 into account. So 5 plus 6 is calculated in the ALU and then the result the process result that is 11 is sent from the ALU back to the memory. The same goes with other arithmetic operators like minus into division etc and in a similar process the logical decisions are also taken with the help of the relational operators like greater than less than etc. Next we come to control unit. The control unit is responsible for guiding the interpretation, flow and manipulation of all data and information in a computer system. Now control unit what it does it guides the flow of data. It will not do any work by itself but just it will guide and see if everything is working properly or not. Therefore, it acts as a supervisor by controlling and guiding the operations taking place in a computer. What, how it acts? It acts like a supervision, supervisor. Let's say in an office, what is the role of a supervisor? Supervisor will not do the work by himself or herself. Supervisor will guide and see if all the operations are taking place properly or not. And if any help is required, then the supervisor will guide. Remember this word, then you'll be able to write about control unit in a better way in your examinations. So control unit is known as what? It is known as the supervisor because it guides the interpretation, flow and manipulation of data and information in a computer system. Let's go to the last part of the CPU, which is resistor. Resistors are the smallest data holding elements that is located in the CPU. A resistor temporarily stores frequently used data, instructions and memory address that are to be used by the CPU. Now whatever data is to be used frequently, those data and instructions are to be uh, stored. Now who stores it? It is not stored by the memory. For faster processing, whatever frequently used data is there, it is stored by the CPU itself. Therefore, we say that resistor are the smallest data holding elements. Why smallest data holding elements? Because you cannot store a lot of data in resistor. It is basically a small amount of memory basically used for storing the memory address and some frequently used data. I hope you have understood all the things that are discussed in the part one. We will discuss in part two about different types of memory. I hope that this session was useful. Thank you very much.